So this is the piece. Um, as you can see, it's pretty dinged up. It's got a lot of little things in it. Um, and there's even some parts that are kind of coming apart. So what that tells me is that I really need to, um, it would either need to be sanded down a lot or you can just do a stress piece, which is what I almost always go with because it's just easier. So that's what I'm gonna do. So the first thing I did was pick an area in the house and um, or outside, whatever you wanna do, but today's a rainy cold day, so pick inside. Um, I put a drop cloth down. Um, it's just a throwaway plastic drop cloth that I got from Home Depot or Lowe's, um, just to make sure I don't spill anything. So the very first thing you need to do is make sure that your piece is clean and free of dust. Um, the easiest way to do that is just get a paper towel and um, get it wet. It doesn't need any soap or anything. Just get it wet and then just wipe it off. Now this piece was an inside piece and it was pretty well taken care of and so it wasn't real dirty. I've had other pieces, especially like you get into the crevices and stuff that are just filthy. And sometimes the cleaning process takes longer than the paint process. Lucky for me, this one doesn't. If you've got dust particles and things like that on your piece before you, and then you start painting it, um, they will get trapped in there and you'll have like a bumpy texture, which you don't really want. So clean it good. The next thing I'm gonna show you how to do is how to mix your own chalk paint. Now, of course, you can easily go to Lowe's or Home Depot or Ace or anywhere and get pre-made chalk paint. Super easy. Only problem is it's not very affordable. Um, it's expensive, they mark it up a lot. Um, so I learned how to mix my own and it's truly never failed me. Um, so give it a shot. Let me show you how I do it. Well, Instagram failed me on that one, but it cut off so it didn't record that. But what we did was we took one third cup of this um, plaster Paris, dumped it in here, got one third cup of water, and we stirred it with our stir stick until it was like um, a thin milk consistency. There should be no more clumps or anything like that. Once you get it to that consistency, you add one cup of your just regular old plain latex paint. I went in and I said I want white paint as cheap as you can make it. That's what I want. And so that's what I got. I use the, this is the recipe for any color. It doesn't have to be white. You can do gray like this. You can do black like this. It takes a little bit of tweaking to get it to your desired color, but it's, it's doable. You can do it with any color. So um, then once you add your paint, it gets to, you know, your paint, paint consistency. It's just like other paint, it, especially your white one. It looks exactly the same. Um, so that's what you do. So as you can see, I'm kind of struggling with the like setting up my, I'm all squatted down and weird. So I'm just gonna take it in my hands and do it this way. But now that we've got our paint mixed up, now keep in mind, this is for a fairly small project. Um, if you are going to do a bigger project, my advice would be to mix a bigger batch. And you know how to do that. If you've cooked and you know recipes, you just double up on some things. Um, and I would buy a reusable paint can. They have them at Lowe's for like 99 cents that has a lid. And I would mix a pretty big batch to begin with. Here's why. I have done many, many projects where I didn't do that. And um, so I would do a little batch, do a little one day as a stay at home mom with kids at home. You don't get a lot done in one day. So I'd put all my stuff up and then I'd come back to the project the next day and I'd mix more paint and it wouldn't, it wouldn't match up. So um, mix a big batch if you're doing a big project. Try to make as much as you'll need, if that makes any sense. Um, all right, so we're gonna get to painting. We're ready to go. Almost any tutorial or any painter I've ever watched or talked to, they tell you to get like these certain brand of brushes and I go to get them and they're like 16 bucks, 20 bucks a brush. And I just can't because I'm cheap. And so I buy these. They're the throwaway. They're in the little bins at the bottom. They come in a bunch of different sizes and I think they're like 99 cents a brush. So I just go 
and stock up on like 30 of those, all different sizes. And that's what I use. That's what I've used on every single project I've ever done. It's never served me wrong. So in my opinion, don't buy those expensive ass brushes. Just buy the throwaways. Then at the end of the project, you just throw it away. It's great. So don't buy expensive brushes. So here we go. Get you some paint and just go for it. Honestly, start anywhere you want and just do it. It's not going to be pretty. Um, sorry, I'm trying to do this through the phone and I don't know what I'm doing. I can't see nothing. Um, it's gonna be real ugly your first coat. I'm gonna do some and I'll show you again. about is did you hit every space did you get every little crevice see there's there's paint in there there needs to be paint in every little corner um, also you need to make sure that you the only thing you truly need to worry about with the first coat is did you leave some like this little drippy droppy it's like kind of gooped up that's not gonna be good because that's gonna stay there so we need to kind of dab that out make sure you don't have any drips um, or anything where the water has I mean, the paint has hair collected somewhere um, because that will stay. Um, so this is it, this is your first coat. Now the beauty of it is, you just need to wait for this to dry and it'll take just a few minutes because chalk paint dries so quick. So we're gonna let it dry. So here's where we're at. Um, it's dry to the touch. You can't tell because my hands are painted on anyways, but um, it's dry. Not the top, because I did that last. So that'll take a couple more minutes, but. I am super impatient. I'm gonna get going. Now, you do not wanna paint over where it is still wet because um, it will just swipe that paint off and it will look messed up. I have made that mistake. Because I am super impatient, my advice to you is just wait till the damn thing's dry. But I'm gonna get going because I got stuff to do. So I'm doing my second coat and I just wanna show you what happens if you are impatient and paint over wet paint on your second or third coat. Um, this is what happens. If you paint over wet paint, it just kind of strips that first coat off and so you'll see that little dark spot right there. Um, that's what you don't want to do. It's really hard to move on once you've done that. Um, it's really hard to get it right. Now, surprisingly, and I usually two coats are great for me, but see how you still see all of the brush marks and things like that? Um, that's not what you want. So I'm gonna have to do a third coat on this anyways. I just need to make sure and let it dry better because you don't want that. That's no bueno. So now that it's all dry and ready to be distressed, um, I just went out and got two pieces of sandpaper. I've got 60 and 80 grit. Both would be totally fine. So as you can see, the distressing is done. Um, I've done it all over. I did it along, the light's not good, hold on. Okay, there's the distressing. I didn't do any of the tabletop part, 
Um, I kind of kept it light. Now, I have gone completely overboard with distressing before, um, and it looks great. I'll show you what that looked like. This is a piece that, it was one of the first pieces I ever did, and as you can see, I went wild with the distressing. I just kind of did it everywhere, and it turned out great, too. I mean, I'm taking this and kind of just making some different spots, and as you can see, I've hit it a couple of times, um, and this is what it looks like. Also been told that a ring of lots of different keys and once you just take it to hitting on here, that does the same kind of job. I don't have a ring of keys, so I took a baggie and filled it with different bolts, um, different screws and bolts, and I'm going to see what that does. Now, I've never done this before, so it may do nothing, it may not work, but we're gonna give it a shot. Here goes. Oh yeah, I like that. Oh gosh fell out the bag didn't hold up it's okay keep going Ooh. so this is good enough for me as you can see it looks a little weird right now but once we um, take that stain and put it on there um, it's gonna catch there and it's just gonna look a little dinged up I'm gonna go ahead and continue to do this throughout the rest of the piece probably more so with just the whatever this is called meat eater I don't know I like what it's doing. Now, I would suggest trying not to hit it head on, you know, because then it's going to make all of these little marks. I kind of just hit it to an edge and just hit a couple of marks. And I like what it's doing. So here's where we're at. As you can see, I took that. I just kind of hit it from all different angles is kind of important to know. Um, so it doesn't look too uniform. And I like what it did. Um, now I need to go ahead and do the top, which can be a little tricky, um, but let's do it. Okay. Now this is where we're at. Um, I like it. Now we just need to um, take a good non-lint cloth and wipe down all the mess we've made while sanding. You wanna get all that dust off. So now that it's all dusted off and cleaned and um, distressed and everything, I'm gonna go ahead and you always need to seal your piece, no matter what it is. So um, you can do that with a wood stain, you can do that with polyurethane, or you can do it with an antiquing wax. It really makes no difference. Um, they all work great. For today, I'm gonna go ahead and use a wood stain. So what you need now is your wood stain, any choice um, will do. I'm gonna go with the Minwax um, Dark Walnut. I've done it in all colors, and they all work out great. Um, so you choose what color you want, and then again, I've got an old trusty brush, and you need a lint-free cloth. You can get these at Home Depot or Lowe's or anywhere like that, or you can just take old Hanes white undershirts and rip those up. Do not use a towel or anything that's going to create lint because it will get caught up. So here we go. So we're just going to dip it in the stain, and a little stain goes a long way. Then we're going to just start putting it wherever because in a minute we're gonna just go ahead and wipe it off we want this kind of everywhere we don't want to let it sit for too long so that it dries um, so let's just do this small area for now so I've got this all colored in with stain sorry about that and now I'm gonna take my cloth and I'm gonna start wiping it now you can leave um, a lot or you can wipe it pretty clean this is a perfect tutorial for those of you who think, I don't want to do this, I'm going to screw it up, I'm going to ruin something forever. You're not. You might screw up, but you can fix it. I didn't like the way that looked. Um, I don't really know what I was thinking. <laughs> but um, that's not how we should have put the stain on. So I went ahead and 
just, it was just too brown for me. So I went ahead and painted it over that top. Um, and we're just gonna kinda let that dry. It's no big deal, it's messy, doesn't matter. Um, that's what we're gonna do. And I'm gonna move on to this part. Oh gosh, that looks dark, it's not. Okay, so here we go. So this is kind of more the way that I do pieces like this. I take this, um, I dip it in the stain, but you kinda wanna do a bri dry brush approach. Um, so you take this, you get it in the stain, but you dab it off, you don't want a lot on there. So now it's, it's on there, but it's not a lot. And then you just take it and you just kind of lightly brush it along there. That kind of creates the image of like um, a distress and also like wood grain lines. Um, you wanna go with the grain and I like this look a lot better. Here's another thing. You see these little corners um, where two pieces meet? You want things to kind of gather there, just like you want things to kind of gather on every little edge. So you're gonna take this and kind of that. It looks, um, it's a little more heavy than a lot of your other areas. This is what we've got going on. I still have not re-dipped my brush, FYI. Um, a little stain, like I said, goes a long way. That was my original screw up. So, and then we'll just keep going until you think you need more stain. And like I said, it's, there's really not a lot of rhyme or reason um, to what we're doing here. Um, I would say just let your hand be free and don't, you know, it's not a very, you know, let your arm kind of flick around and go in different directions and different, you know, short strokes, long strokes, all of it. Um, sometimes you go over it, um, but it's not a uniform paint and it's pretty hard to mess up. Here, this is another thing. Kind of dab this brush on the ledge and it creates a really pretty look. Um, so, we're just gonna do this all over. And this so now we're back to the um, the one I screwed up the first time. So it's dry now because that's the beauty of chalk paint. Um, so now I'm just gonna take my stain and do the same thing. There we go. See. You thought all was lost, but nip, it's fine.